Uh, today I'm bringing to you this book which has been like a revelation for me. I have loved this world that the author has created. And I have to be honest here and say I was a bit sad when I reached the ending of the book because I felt so in love, not only with the story that's told in here, but also with the world that Alexis has created and the characters and everything. And I was sad to let it go, you know. When I was reading it, I wanted to finish it because I wanted to know everything that was going to happen in the book because it was very powerful for me. But at the same time, I was like sad to let it go, yeah, you know. And as you can see, it's The Year of the Witching by Alexis Anderson. It's her first book. And probably you are more familiar with the cover that has this black girl like in a very eerie city setting and all that. But I don't know why this uh, cover kind of appealed me more. I don't know exactly why, but I, I felt like, I don't know, I love this cover because I have a theme for white books and I have to be honest and then they are the ones that get dirtier with time, but I just love how simple the design of the cover is and how amazing it is and how it brings uh, lots of things that are going to be discussed in the book, just you know, to the fore. Okay, uh, without further ado, we're going to find a lot of very interesting topics uh, treated in this, in this book. Uh, it talks about the imbalance in power, how there's people who are very powerful and they get to do everything they want. Well, there's people who are like sort in the middle and there's these people living in the fringes of society. We are also going to have uh, this racial point of view in which we are going to find the main character is a black girl and she looks like those people who live in the fringe of society but she was born inside the society it's a bit more complicated than that but yeah uh, and the thing is that she's always seen as uh, something less as she doesn't belong and she has to prove herself harder in order to belong where everyone belongs so you know also we are going to find um, a critic to the patriarchy we are going to find this amazing world that the author has created in which uh, religion and uh, patriarchy has a lot of power. We are going to find this society who, that's built around this religious uh, thing <laughs> where we have this figure of the apostles. Uh, they are all men and they are powerful and they can have as many wives as they want and you know they are like <laughs> And the thing is that um, this patriarchy is going to be protected also by religion. Religion is going to have a lot of, of you know, of protagonism in this book. And also we are going to find, like, in an antagonic way, uh, this religion praises the, like, this lord, that, that the father, and obviously he's a guy, and he's the good one, and, you know, you are the, he's the one that you have to pray to, and you have to be perfect, and you have to be silent, and you have to be, you know, if you want to, to be one of the flock, and, you, and if you want to go to this idea of heaven that they have, you have to be, you know, a spotless, and you have to be brilliant, and you have to be everything they want from you. And there is, like, this antagonic figure that's called the mother, and the mother is depicted as with very dark skin and she is seen like something less from there's these people in Bethel uh, Bethel is where you have this religion and where the action is going to happen and these people see the mother as you know as something less as something evil you don't want anything to do with the mother so you can see there's this you know this patriarchic religious thing going on and we are also going to find witches uh, there is uh, this big wood called the dark wood and it said that inside this, uh, this place, this wood, you find witches. Uh, there's like four witches, uh, two lovers, uh, another one that's drawn it in a lake and Lilith who is, you know, like the queen of the witches. And so there is all this lore and I'm not going to, um, to say a lot about it because um, I want you to just just know some things about the book but not know a lot of it because for me it was amazing to to read this book because it's like it's amazing because I felt like when the author was talking about everyday stuff like I don't know getting up and 
do everything that you're supposed to do, you know, talk with people and do your curves and go to church. It's like the author has this voice. And then when she's talking about the witches, about Darwood, about, you know, about all the legends and all the religion and all the rituals around these witches and when our main character interacts with them, it's like the author very subtly changes her voice and it's like you get transported into that place where the action is going on and you feel, you know, it, it's, it's creepy and it's eerie and it's amazing and it's so well done. And I love how you can get transported into place and I have to say I'm, I'm completely amazed by the world that she has created. And as I say, you have uh, all these elements, right? We are going to file Emmanuel. Emmanuel uh, was born in uh, peculiar circumstances, I'm not going to say anything about it. You're going to find it in the very beginning of the book, but it's going to be something that goes, that's going to carry through the book, and I want you to be surprised. But uh, she, as I say, she's like this very dark-skinned girl. She looks like she doesn't belong, like she should belong in the outskirts, but she has been born inside the city, so her peers have to accept her but they are a little bitchy about it because they don't want you know they always reminding her that she she was the doubter of the week of something that a woman that maybe she was a witch or something someone who wasn't pious and and you know and brilliant that she did something that wasn't allowed so she's always a judge but the things that her mother did so it doesn't matter that she's perfect it doesn't matter that she follows the religion that she follows the law it doesn't matter, she's always going to be compared to her mother. So yeah, it's a very unfair, situa unfair situation. And uh, I don't know how to do justice to this book. <laughs> yeah, because it's amazing. And we are going to find her at the very beginning. She's with her best friend. And her best friend is going to marry this very high person in the religious hierarchy. And it's from the very beginning, even though that she's explaining that to you from a point of view of someone who believes in that religion and, and, and its teachings, you can see that something doesn't add up. This guy has like a thousand wives and has kids with all of them and it doesn't matter that some of them are younger or older and, and you know, it's like you're reading that and you're feeling comfortable and it's like, okay, how, how all of this is justified. How this patriarchy stands. Why religion, you know, sustains that kind of life. And why is the mother seen as evil? Why are those witches? Why it's all happening? Because um, Emmanuel is going to find herself in some kind of museum and she's going to find alleys where she doesn't expect them. And it's going to be an amazing book. And I have to say that I love everything that is happening in this book because um, I remember there was a time in which I was talking with a with the hubby and I was saying, okay, I know how it all is going to end, you know, because these witches are blah, 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 and at the end we're going to discover this and this and that. And I was so wrong. <laughs> I mean, I love that I was so wrong because when you read a lot, uh, I'm surely you know that, sometimes you can guess where a book is going, and, you know, and be wrong and having a book, the twist before your eyes and that presents you things that you hadn't even thought about. That for me that's amazing because I love being surprised by a book. And having a book like this one, as you can see, I put a lot of post-its, that it's like 400 pages long and just I just couldn't put it down. It's so well written. I love the world building that Alexis created. I love the city of Bethel. I love how the patriarchy there works. I love how she explains how religious power is handed down from generation to generation. I did love because you are going to have this backstory about these witches, about this this dark wood, and how Emmanuel it's called to this wood, and why is she called there, and what relationship she has with the witches, and uh, there is going to be these plagues un unleashed upon Bethel. And you're going to see people suffering and you're going to see this girl who is like in the center of everything and it will be so easy for her just to turn her back to the people that never wanted her and say hey God riddance but she decides to stay. I love the growth that she has because she has always been seen as an outcast and she has these friends as I say that has to marry the big guy in the, in the, in the church and I love how she she's her own person i love her i mean she's amazing she may be the daughter of someone but she is her own person and i love that i love how she relates to the people around her how she treats her family how her family treats her i love the idea of seeing that this book presents and i love how people who think that they have the power and they are on the right side of things how they extortion and force 
other people to do what they want. And I love that there's this character, uh, there's going to be a bit of romance, but it's not insta-love, it's not forced, it's very subtle and I love it. Because we are going to find uh, when Emmanuel is thrown into this quest, of which I'm saying nothing. Uh, I, I already say that it's going to be these plagues and that she's going to be... Uh, you know, deciding if she wants to stop them or not. Uh, she's going to, to go with this guy who's called Ezra. Ezra is the son of the prophet, the big, the big guy, as I said before. And I love how, despite being in a position of power himself, being the next big thing, being a guy, being, you know, the son of a prophet, the, the next prophet to be, I love how he questions everything that's happening around him. And I love how he begins thinking that maybe this story is not the one that they have been told, that maybe there are some gray areas or maybe yellow and purple and whatever, because they have all been told a story that's black and white. And I love how he is this amazing character that begins to, you know, to relate himself to Manuel and how they found this common ground in which they can, you know, I love it. I, 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 I will say lots of things about the plot of this book, but I don't want to because I think it's very surprising. Let's say that if you like airy, creepy, horror stories with witches, but witches like real witches, like bad, dark witches that do things that don't expect them to give you a present and that you're going to be raped because of that. Expect like witches as they will have been if they had suffered in life and you know they had a chance to make you pay. So you, you have these witches that have been persecuted, that have been treated badly and they are here and they're going to have the revenge because that's what they want. If you like this kind of representation of, uh, you know, of patriarchy where you are going to find women suffering a lot at the hands of, of the men that are supposed to protect them. You are going to find man, men that are like good men, but you're going to find a lot of bad men here that uh, to they do whatever they ha want to do and they always have an excuse it's not me it was her that provoked me it wasn't me i am pious pios i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> i am so good but it was her that you know it was she was skimpy and she was lustful and she was sinful so you know i succumbed to the temptation so we are going to find lots of women being punished by the acts of men and we are going to find this person here who wants to stop all of that i mean i can say a lot of things about this book but as I say, if you like own voices book, if you like books about representation, about race, about culture, about, as I say, the imbalance of power, about religion, about how uh, these, I mean, how to say that? Religion has been perverted, perverted in my own opinion, by men, and they use it, they, they, how they use it. Religion can be a nice thing, but there's people in power who use it just to further their power and the way they control everyone and we are going to find that in this book too and we are going to find as I say different scales of people who belong people who don't belong and the wise and the house and, and it's going to be an amazing way and I'm not making it justice and I I'm sorry I'm not making it justice but this is a book that you don't want to lose the chance of reading I have to say it's one of the best books I have read this year for me it's been an amazing read and I love the atmospheric world that the author has created and I love that it raises topics that are as necessary as I say as race, religion, patriarchy, power and 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 all of that because I think it's something that's very needed and I love uh, the distinction between the mother and the father and how the story can be told uh, or learned you know depending on the side you are on you can see something as bad or something as good and maybe neither of them are bad or good just different and depending on the teachings that you have been taught you can see things you know through a wrong scope or something like that and i love that she brought as a topic and and that she broadens your own uh, gaze upon the wall about that okay let's see this story from all points of view so it can make sense to you and i love that so thank you for watching bye